Hello, hello, everybody. Today we are going to be continuing and uh, maybe finishing the Legend of Spyro Trilogy. It all depends on exactly how much is left, which we'll take a look at in the chapter section. But I just want to see, does this also have a come in quick trailer? Oh, huh. Kind of, sort of, but we're still on the, the start screen. That's interesting. It's mostly just showing the, like, opening level a bit. Ah, oh, then the dam. Ah, that, that jumped ahead. So it's kind of, sort of, a trailer. Which is kind of interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> I wonder why, like, only Spyro, Legend of Spyro 1, A New Beginning, had, like, a big ol' big ol' slibbity slam kind of trailer with voiceover and stuff. All the other ones are like, and uh, here is a uh, <laughs> gameplay, and that's basically it for a lot of it. Well, we're going to quickly check and see. So it does seem that... We are only three levels away from the end. So this will probably be it. Actually, yeah, it kind of follows the... I do like the, the level layout, how they did this. They made a map of the land, and then you follow the journey. Like, that's cool. But last time... We saved Warfang from imminent invasion, destroyed the golem, and then Malifor sent a telecommunication crystal telling everyone, and now we are, I'm going to send the giant destroyer to kill everything, which apparently is, uh, apparently succeeded. It touched the Ring of Fire and uh, is beginning the doom. So Sparks and Terador are leading... Like, trying to get to as many... ba 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 Other... Outlying villages to get them to safety in the underground city of Warfang. While... Ignitus took Spyro and Cinder to try and cross the Ring of Fire. Except they couldn't make it, so he exploded... To protect them as long as possible to send them... To the Land of Doom so they can go confront Malifor as kind of a sacrifice due to the fact that he failed the both of them as eggs. And he's like, well, now it is time for me to do what I can at least. Oh, we need to hit a 150 combos for that gallery. Get all of the unlockables for enemy gallery. Reach the floating islands. That'll be interesting. So, sorry, alliance gallery. What even kind of alliance? The alliance between dragons and the, the Avalor... Cheetah people? <laughs> but we're gonna continue. Because uh, <laughs> I do think that at least... Good. The bonus boss is dead. Everything is right in the world. I hated that little bonus enemy. I just don't think it was designed well. It was designed very wonkily and weirdly. It slid around. It honestly felt like... The developers thought, oh, they'll just use breath attacks to kill it. When we've only ran into that enemy a handful of times now. So I have no idea how to actually go about killing him. We're gonna try and explore a bit. Try and get as many of the collectibles as possible. Oh, hey. Health upgrade for me. Huzzah. I do enjoy the music here. Spyro, why are you being an idiot? The music in these games have always been really nice. If maybe a little bit underplayed. Or like, not underplayed, but like... I'm trying to think of the word... 
There's a specific word I'm looking for, and it's like... The music in these games are understated, I guess. It doesn't really jump out at you a lot. Usually. Hmm. Apparently there's just a lot of memory crystals sprinkled about. And we've yet to find the... Oh. Well, hopefully that didn't cut us off from... Like, a bonus area. Because I, wa I wasn't done exploring. I had lots of exploring left to do. And I like this guy getting mana juice back. He's gonna be big guys. Ah, shit. guys are still annoying. Dang it. I should have used electricity to get rid of their shields. You are just very annoying enemies to deal with. <laughs> with your auto-locking. Your blocking. At least they don't do as much damage. They still have the sliding hitboxes, which is stupid. So yeah, not sure what the game exactly expects from you with these enemies. And the fact that they can still block my... Attacks is annoying. You have no idea what the game explicitly wants you to do with these guys. It's almost like they have their own weird, like, combat system that the game's just not telling you about. Again, I wish that the enemies that are, like, crawling about could be hit while they're coming out. At least Spyro is getting hits in. While doing things like, again, this is... These guys are just a waste of my time. I don't know the secrets to killing them. The game just didn't really teach that. And there's two of them now. Now there are two of them. Again, what is with that goddamn range? Why do you have to do this? And the fact that they can block, it's just annoying. I don't like it. And the fact that that can still hit me. You should not be able to block that. <laughs> How dare. Why give these things shields? It's just annoying. These things are just annoying. There's nothing else to them. These are substanceless. You all, oh, you begin the combo? Ah, uh, no you don't. We block now. Just frustrating. Ah, looks like he killed his ally. Or something. Man, these things are just annoying to fight. At least they don't take as long. But still, Jesus. And then suddenly, many guys. Honestly, kind of happy that the many guys don't appear alongside the big guys. I got it. If the many guys could appear alongside the big guys, it would be a big old pain. Alright, but now we know that that's the way the game wants us to go.
First things first, we'll come up here and get some health. Because that seems to be the way the game wants us to go, so we can come over here, I guess, and suffer. Because there's a big guy. Yeah, it seems to be like, hey, kill this guy, you, you get wins. I faced the wrong way. Wow, there's a climbable for there. Have to kill the flying guys first because they're going to interrupt my fight with the big guy. At least the lava doesn't seem to damage us, which is nice. There is at least that. If the lava could also damage us, these guys would be utterly insufferable. My turn. All right, now he can't as easily block our attacks. All right, no idea what even hit me. Come on, <laughs> quit blocking. Thank you, Spyro, for tanking all that damage. For some reason, this guy is very obsessed with Spyro. I appreciate that. Maybe this is just a big guy that you're supposed to dodge around a million times. I wish I could fear you, big man. These enemies are just weird to fight more than anything. I'm sorry, but enemies with this much health I, I don't think should be able to block. Oh, come on! <laughs> it was my heavy attack. You shouldn't be able to block that. I can understand, like, oh, you hit multiple little attacks. But just blocking right out when I tried to do a big attack? How dare. Finally, dead. I knew there was a secret. <laughs> we just feared that guy so hard, he blasted off like Team Rocket. Ah, I was wondering where you went. Come on, you can die, big guy. Perpetually flying enemies are a little annoying. They just dip and weave all over the place. Again, the music is just very nice. Especially seems like especially because these guys seem to like really bounce around all over the place. Hmm. Nope, can't go that way. Alright, so this is going to be another fight, guys, for unlockable loot. Get obliterated. If 
At least these guys are a lot simpler to fight than the big, big guys. Whoop. Hey, the breath crystal came back. Or mana, I guess. These guys are much more pleasant to fight. Bounce around a bit. Wait for a decent amount of them to pop out so that my siren scream can hit as many as possible. Ah, you became unfeared? You're gonna wish you were still. At least these guys don't do tons of damage. So even though they have an auto lock, we fly up into the air and come back down. It's not as annoying to deal with. Especially after I have so many health upgrades. I don't think I double tapped, but apparently the game said I did indeed double tap. Ah, you son of a bitch, you lured me in. Again, that auto lock slide is so stupid. Okay, just give me all my breath back. That better not reset the entire fight, because I just don't want to deal with that guy. That's my main thing. I just don't want to deal with annoying big guy. Hmm. The fact that it just seems to have reset worries me a little bit. I'm just a little afraid that it'll go, oopsie doopsie. You went and reset the whole fight. Which I just, I would not appreciate. Thank you very much. Get nuclear hit if we still have that active... I'm playing a Spyro just a little bit to get more green gems so that we can electrify the big guy if he comes back. Come here, get some more of these so I can maybe use it casually. responded. Well, we didn't destroy it entirely. My bad. Destroy them all. In the words of Billy, destroy us all! I only know that line from a Lythero video, I think. Finally got feared. Let's do this. So it seemingly did reset and it was got angry. No, I dare. 
So it seems to be the only way to really fight this guy is to deprive him of his weaponry that he can just magically br bring back. Kind of annoying. At least he doesn't get all it back. No. So the only way to beat this guy is to kind of cheese him. Okay. Weird. Weird decision for an enemy. Especially because disarming the enemies hasn't really been a big deal. And yet when they do make it a big deal, it's kind of annoying. I presume this would be Spyro for his little head fins. Looks kind of nice. Now there's only one other armor hidden about. God, we got so much experience from that too. Let's see what we were leveling up. <laughs> Just you apparently. Which would almost be enough. Almost enough. Jesus. Meanwhile, poor neglected Spyro. Not many of his things are on to second, uh, like, on to third level. Mostly because I've been playing as Cinder the most all this time. Making up for lost time. Because she didn't get us her needed spotlight. Hmm. That seems to be like the same way of going forward. I kind of wish that these areas had a map. So I could look around. Oh, hey, we were supposed to like climb up from this side as well. Weird. Why are all of the things that we were supposed to climb just not facing the direction? Let's do it. Just get our health and mana breaths up a bit. That's what I'm trying to do. So yeah, these uh, weird evil dragons just seem to be infinitely respawning. I'm going to head back this way just to grab a green gem pile that's over here. And I'll just need to be aware of other enemies that are, like, big, tanky. Because I guess <laughs> if, if destroying their shield is obviously going to make them take more damage, but... Just, <laughs> they can do nothing without their big ol' hammers. Like, it, it wouldn't be as bad if, like, I don't know... Like, I don't know, just like, those big guys seem a little one-note. And it just randomly came to me, like, oh yeah, I should destroy their weapons, disarm them, make them easier to kill. Oh yeah, we completely forgot. What was uh, the other armor you just got? Increased chance to combo. I don't even know what that really does. We're going to keep nuclear hit because that benefits AI Spyro, I think. And that's more just a uh, little healy bobbers. My bad. Maybe that's why there's healy bobbers here. That the game doesn't want me to be able to get to. You'd think we're over lava, we'd be able to rise up a bit easier. Or is it just there to tempt us? All right, that's blocked off. Yeah, 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 random enemy, I don't care. I'm just gonna fly around, see if there's any secrets. Yeah, because this just leads back to this arena. I doubt we can go this way. You'd think they'd just fill it up with geometry if they didn't want you to go there. Yes, yes, hello enemy. Nobody cares about you. So I do believe that everything on this section of the map is done. Hmm. 
<laughs> just <laughs> the hitbox is slightly pushing me back with each attempt. It's like, no, don't hit the health. Health is bad. So either we go down here or we go to the left. Ah, oh, there's a cave up there. Yeah, those are just annoying more than anything. Huh. Considering that we're supposed to be going towards the big ol' big ol'... Hmm. But at the same time, the camera is moving here. <laughs> this is my problem where games have, like, uncertain main ways forward. Okay, good. There's a hidden, there's an invisible wall that tells me which way to go. Because you never know when sometimes a game developer will be like, I'm going to put secrets in. And then they kind of just kind of make it weird. All right, the fact there's a lot of health and mana is a little worrisome. I see another save point. So the game wants me to head that direction. Oh, hey. Once again, if the bounces. And there's a dark crystal. Darn. Oh, this guy has waves of doom. I wish I had more control over my camera. That is my main gripe with some of these arenas. If you have a big ol' big ol' hey, be careful of this guy. Let me actually see what the big ol' big ol' be careful of this guy guy is doing. Because if I can't be careful of him, if I can't see him... Well, apparently we hit... Huh, apparently, with mana, or like, level up thingies, if you can only carry as much experience as you have, like, uh, levels to give. Interesting. That's kind of nice, because now all the experience should go to Spyro. Come on, big guy. Please die. And big guy is dead. Apparently not. I, I think some's... Yeah. Or I don't know. Not sure how the experience is divided now that she is max level. Fine, we'll go after a feared buddy. And get blasted. Come on, game. <laughs> Let me do the platforming. Well, let's destroy the dark crystal. I hear footsteps in the game. Ah, the other... Alright. For some reason, these guys... Another guy respond? I don't know. Weird decision of the game. Why did these guys respawn? Just... Weird decision. You're just annoying. Please die. Please die. Please die. Please die. 
Mr. Respawn for no reason, man. Please die. Please get smacked. Please get annihilated. Run away all you want. How dare you spin to win. That is illegal in 50 states. I never know if that's gonna be the new, like, uh... Shockwave smash, or if that's just a normal smash from these guys. At least I have my Fury Meter up again. Which I need to remember, is very good at dealing damage, but is not a get-off-me tool. Because we get Convexity Breath. Which is just such a cool thing. And I believe this is final armor for... I don't know, Spyro? Oh, for Cinder. Alright, armor. Let's see. This is... Fury Breath Unlocked? What do you mean, game? What is Fury Breath? Yeah, I don't, I don't know what Fury Breath is. Because, uh... That almost makes it sound like we could use the Fury Breath outside of our Fury Mode. I almost want to look that up. I'm gonna... Actually, it is. I'm intrigued. I want to know now. Because what does that mean? I am intrigued and I want to know. Because I don't know what it does. Hmm. Because apparently it does unlock the Fury Breath, it seems to say, but no idea how to equip it. Oh, I just need to double tap. Alrighty then. So if I ever have anything I want to just be dead, I did not know that I just needed to double tap in any direction. But okie dokie. But I am now intrigued. Let's do this. If I have anything that I just want to die, I can just make it die. Now let me see. What are the diddly dees for this level? Just stamina, which is actually pretty, would be pretty nice to have. Extra stamina for extra, just out of nowhere, fury breath. Would be very cool. And I see the other one over here. I wonder how to get to it. Again, the music's very nice. Hmm. I wonder how the game expects you to get there normally. Maybe I'm supposed to... I wonder what determines Cinder to just go flying off into the ether. Because sometimes Cinder just bounces all up there. Maybe I'm supposed to, like, glide from the top? There is a save point up there, so it's not gonna, like, end the game. Or maybe we have to unlock it by coming to this platform, getting into a fight? Really smiggity smack the enemies. How dare you. Quit running for your life and die like a bitch.
Quit, quit holding an invisible axe you don't have. You are dead. Uh, apparently we all, we were at 79 hits. We almost could have made it. And man, Spyro got a bunch of experience there for no reason. Let's see. What's cheapest to unlock next? 2 to 5, 3 to 7, 1 to 6. I guess you. Try to get all those Fury Gems and see what that does. Oh, did they respawn again? What's with these enemies and respawning out of nowhere? I approach the objective. Game says, oh, by the way, we want you to do this again. No reason. So it does seem like experience gotten by max level sender does go to Spyro, it seems. Push the rock! But again, so far my only major complaint is the random locking off of camera controls sometimes. Oddly, I think this is going to be a simpler platforming experience compared to other Spyro platforming experiences. Hmm, interesting. Oh, probably the game does not want me to go to that inexplicable platform looking place. Like, it looks like a platform I should be able to jump onto, like, hey, glide from here to get that other stamina gem kind of place, but apparently no. The answer is no, apparently. But there is one way to know. Nope, invisible wall. Interesting. When in doubt, Spyro Wrecking Ball. We can save from here. What the? Alright, there's an invisible wall there for no reason but being a bastard, I guess. But luckily this fell down, so we can get back up super fast. Maybe we're supposed to go around the other way and drop down? That's the closest thing I can think of. Smack him up. Smack him up. Punish him. Kill him. Make him dead. Cause him to explode. <laughs> now I'm just thinking Spyro going, he's like, now I get to be like Cinder, getting all the experience. Finally! Well, you got over your fear quick. Or maybe you just didn't like being in that position. Maybe six of one, half a dozen the other. But the next big guy we run into, I am using Fury Breath Convexity. Then again, maybe I can... <laughs> Definitely uses a lot of breath, but God, that was satisfying. Maybe that's why they put so many mana gems around, because they knew people want to play with their new convexity breath. Because it should be just down here, right? <laughs> I don't know if I missed any stamina gems. Back in before levels. I know we missed one health gem. 
but not sure about mana gems. We'll have to see. Who needs charging when you can just flip through levels like a badass? Stock up on health. Uh, there's the destroyer. Are we gonna have to fight him again? The destroyer with, uh, without. Well, uh, for a moment there, I thought the destroyer just didn't have a bottom half. But now it looks like he's there. This is kind of weird. That's a nice skybox with the swirling vision of death. I will have to say, the Fury Breath helmets look a little funky. Look out. Oh! Okay, darn you. I was just setting up my convexity. Oh, so one full bar of convexity just annihilates an enemy. Neat to know. Or at least one of these big guys that seem to have more health than their green counterparts from earlier. Darn it. Whoop. Luckily, somehow that is the easiest attack to dodge from these guys. Meanwhile, normal ones, I just get hit by all day. Darn you. How dare you whirly whirl around at me. Whoop. And... Gotta flip around a lot. Try to avoid... Somehow, you the big guy, it's hard to keep, keep my combos going on you. Your armor flying off almost made me think you were attacking me in a new, unconventional way. Again, I really do like the kind of enemy, like, battle damage part. It's just neat. Swirl the world. Get smacked. Get smacked. You're nearing death, aren't you? And somehow I, I reset my combo again in there somewhere. Oh, just more, more experience crystals. They just pop, propped out of nowhere. Yeah, from YouTube chat. Hello, did my argument at all bother you? I was only sharing my point of view, mildly pro-villain and edgy. Ah, no problem at all. I just didn't really have anything to, like, add to it in the comment section. So I don't think you were too overly pushy. You were just like, here's my thoughts, and that is perfectly fine. I just might not always have something to say back. <laughs> Again, I do find it funny. It's like, either I've just been playing Cinder so, so much that now... Spyro is just getting power leveled. Or they are just power leveling the player in preparation for what's to come. Could be either or. Oh, uh, wrong one. I want to go to elements so that we can power level the boy. And get all of his fury gems. Three to seven, one to six. Looks like he power leveling rock next. Or earth. And quickly check. Yep, this level is done, which this will probably be the end of it. Again, I really like the music. It's kind of like underneath the rest of the presentation, but... It adds nicely.
scenery gallery menu in bonus. I forget exactly. Oh, because it said get to the flying islands or whatever. And that's what this is. Mm. Ah, cutscene, cutscene. It it's almost like we're not above a land of doom. The tower. It must lead to Malifor's lair. Thanks for ruining the moment. <laughs> oh, random enemies. New enemies, it looks like. Up, oh. Mr. Spammy of Darkness, how dare. Or maybe just a variant of enemy we haven't seen in a while. How dare you block of your shield. Your apparatus of blocking the most evil thing. Dodge around. Blast him with some fear. Die, kind of bone stone skeleton. It's the stone bones. That's a neat, like, sword design that's attached to his arm. <laughs> I do find it funny that Malifor's lair, oh so pretty, down... Whoa, 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 whoa. So apparently we're going down there. I thought, like, we were going this way. So either all that is, like, bonus do it if you want. Or, like, lighting these up won't do anything. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> Spyro's breath attack. Ah, oh, that's why. They're multiple torches. That is the most fierce Spyro fire breath out of any in the series. I love it. And I have not used it at all that much because I've been playing as Cinder. Alright, this land is floating up. Okay. I was not expecting that. You know, going by my pseudo crackpot theory that like time like if you wanted to place the various Spyro games into a timeline that Legend of Spyro would technically be first in line in timeline. I wonder if, like, if the floating islands... There were a lot of floating islands in the other Spyro games. <laughs> Malifor is like, I have to cover these torches with dark crystals. The ultimate home defense. Oh yeah, I didn't even look at, like, what collectibles are going to be here. All right, two mini-bosses. And uh, no armor, because we got all the armor, so. Really, if I really wanted to, I could just ignore the bosses. Because I'm ever so slightly worried of what other bosses might be after the one guy. But it's only because I didn't know that I was supposed to electrocute him to get him to drop his club. The one enemy in this game, they demand perfection to kill. I probably should have shouted at him to begin with. But at least now, come on, I want to grab you. I want to grab you in the air. And then he fell to the ground. How dare. You don't want to be grabbed? Fine, I'll pummel you on the ground. So die, little minion man. We'll glance around this side, see if there's anything. Doesn't seem to be. Oh, there's a, there's a that. 
but I wonder where it would actually go. Maybe it's meant to get to the other side. Or maybe I can just confuse the elevation mechanic. The ultimate way to play Legend of Spyro. <laughs> By the way, I love your commentary. You have fun ideas. Thank you very much. I try to fill the air with at least something that is tangible. Try not to be a, damn, that's crazy. Even if that does happen sometimes, like when <laughs> Dark Spyro just comes out to play out of nowhere. Give me a heart attack. Power level Spyro, because he gets all the experience now. Almost. Almost. And from the YouTube chat, hello. Hello, hello. We are nearing the end of the game, I do believe. And I have been enjoying it. With the maybe exception of that one bonus hidden boss guy. That was very specific to beat, because they wanted me to use electricity breath to annihilate him. <laughs> I made soup. Soup is good. Come on, get feared already and die. We have a, a torch to bear. Watch how it's done. <laughs> Watch how it's done. Something Cinder physically cannot do. Hmm. Oh, and I, I'm falling to my doom. I do like that this is kind of an open fly area. A lot of the other ones are very much restricted air currents. Be gone, flying guys. You're just annoying. <laughs> Why well, try to grab them and beat them the old-fashioned way when I can just banshee scream them all to death? As they all deserve. There we go. Through the power of Skyrim, we ascend mountains. Oh, neat. The way that Spyro uses his fire breath while flying is kind of like classically dragon. Who are you guys, and what is that? Please cease being weird enemies. I want to kill you all. They had a weird, like, anchoring mechanism for our tether, which is cool. But they just have not had it this entire game, so it's just weird. Alright, so we'll probably have to give it a specific breath attack. Okay, it went away. I wonder if I can just smack it. We can just smack it. Good to know. <laughs> I guess it would make sense that Malifor would have something like that because of the statues that were strewn about the underground city of Warfang. I guess it would kind of make sense for there to be more of that kind of thing. Oh, hey. <laughs> That's one way to destroy a dark crystal without wasting all my mana. And while I'm not a fan of these hidden enemies of doom, 
guess I wouldn't mind giving them a potential shot. You do a lot of damage with that. Stop. Cease. Cease and desist. Get annihilated. Every single time. Oh, I think I knocked him off the cliff, it looks like. What even kind of demonic weasel are you? Oh. <laughs> These guys just have artillery fire for their arm-based crossbows. But yeah, it's like, for some reason, this section really gives me, like, Spyro, like, Insomniac Spyro 1 vibes. With the artisan lands and everything. Floating dragon islands up in the air. Which is kind of neat that it's the evil villain's lair that's giving these vibes to me. And of course, do our typical Spyro leveling up. Which I do think that leaves just the electricity. Max, max, and level three. Time to power level electricity. Okay, my turn. <laughs> Your only turn. As we open the doors. How these torches are connected to that door, nobody knows. Probably not even Malifor. Oh, it spawns you. Spawns you where, though? Oh, there you are, off, off the coast. Interesting. <laughs> We're gonna throw a flying guy at you. Oh, you're probably gonna be annoying, aren't you? Unless I just do that. I have to get him to come down, I think. Oh, I just instantly died. My bad. I tried to face him legitimately. Which is obviously the wrong idea. From Twitch chat, love this series and game though, despite the arguable plot armor in which, by the way, I have many arguments involving multiple instances of the situations in the game. Eh, yeah, lots of things have plot armor. It's just that probably a bit more obvious for this one because the stakes are so high compared to everything else. I wish these homed a bit. It's hard to aim. Especially because this is a guy that we need to do lots of damage to. Because he has a ice mask I need to break off. It's like you're not doing anything. I don't like that. Ladies first. Hmm. See, it's almost like the game doesn't want me to do that, even though the game is telling me to do that with the ice mask. Very rude of your design game. Oh, 
Jeff, why does one bolt do so much damage? Come on, game. Do I need to stun him first? This seems like... Alright, you have a obvious, hey, use ice, and then apparently immediately went and said, oh, no, don't do that. Weird. At least I got my combo game up. <laughs> Oh, ah, I just hit a wall, darn. Oh, come on, come down and fight, or did you get feared up here? My bad. At least fear keeps you in place. Get obliterated by fear. All they fear is Cinder and her siren breath of doom. I'm just going to spam you to death. Suck it, elite enemy. No idea why it had a obviously ice-shaded mask when it wanted, like, a duller blue, like, uh, blow the mask off wind. I don't know. I think that is a telegraphing issue. Or maybe I'm dumb. Maybe I'm actually colorblind. Who knows? I have the very rare color blindness where I think one blue looks like a slightly different blue. That is a joke, but still would be hilarious. <laughs> By the way, I agree with what a lot of you said earlier. I just get nervous and talk a lot. That's fine. I do not mind people who just want to lurk in my streams. Lurking is perfectly fine. I want to fly up, game. I want to fly up. Have to follow. Or maybe we can just fly towards it and we'll be carried up in the arms of an angel, maybe. The one downside to the free-flying mechanic is dictating where the player can and cannot fly probably gets a little bit difficult for the developers. From YouTube chat, hey there, Neon House Spyro. Quite nice. We are nearing the end of the game. We are utterly power leveling Spyro because we unlocked all of Cinder's elemental abilities. So now Spyro's elemental abilities are the only ones that can get experience now, which is a cool little thing. And now we're entering what seems to be, like, the artisan lands from the original Spyro games, but evil. It's just, like, happy, green, colorful floating islands where the villain resides. Open sesame! This guy's just hurling monster spawners at us. Ah, oh, darn it. It's that again. Get rid of you. Blast you a fear. Dodge your dark matter smoke bullshit. No idea how you block fear, but good for you, buddy. Again, I do like that Malifor has just, like, trap devices to mess with the tether. That's just a neat little thing that the, that's just here. How dare you block a lot. That's illegal with your shield. 
Using shields is illegal. They're supposed to be just cosmetic in these video games, you monster. Ah, darn it. No idea how you block fear, but good for you. We also unlocked, uh, 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 elect, what the hell? We also unlocked just being able to freely use the convexity breath. It is a brilliant fun time. Burns through our mana is super fucking cool. Boom! <laughs> I love it. How dare you twirly whirl, you bastard. Just a quick hopscotch to dodge his magical evil powers. Get beat up. Get beat up. Yeah, look at me. Don't do anything. Just look at me. Ow. He hit me. But luckily, did not do a lot of damage. Got a twirly whirl. I jump back in. You'll die one day, Moss Man from the Deep. Really just feels like we're bullying this guy. He asked for it. He keeps hitting me while I hit him. And that's illegal. Like, what even are you? Some kind of actual swamp monster? Alright, te teleporting explosive wave. Sure. <laughs> oh, and now Spyro has reached his max. Which means we have all the Fury Gems from leveling up the breaths. No idea what the Fury Gems do, but hey, now we have all of them. Hmm. What areas are difficult the first? No idea what the that first means for the sentence, but I know autocorrect and typing can be difficult. But what areas have been difficult? T -t 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 uh, what levels specifically? No level has, like, really super stood out as being hard, I don't think. Like, maybe the golem boss level for being a little, like, uh, not super clear, maybe? There were some bits with the golem boss fight that weren't, like, straight up, straight up. All right, are you going to be in electricity? Let you get that out of your system. No idea why you can block the disarming breath. Unless it's not meant to be electricity. Which I don't think it would be anything else. Closest I could think is maybe ground color wise. But he's just blocking it wholesale, so... Doesn't seem to be, so I guess... Is rock? Like, it's not even doing any damage, so it's probably doing that thing again. Where it's like, oh, it needs to be the specific thing. But we're not going to tell you what that specific thing is. Which is annoying. Okay, you're just being annoying now, game. What element do you want me to use against this guy? What is the point of having colored masks if the colored masks are not telegraphed? Yeah, you're just... Game. Game. What do you want? You know what, game? <laughs> Convexity. Fuck you. How about that, game? Convexity. Who needs actually 
playing the game. Convexity and fear. Screw you. You put on a yellow mask on a guy and electricity doesn't work? Fine. I unmake your little mini boss man. I love the mini bosses though, although they can be quite annoying. They are a cool idea, it's just when they go, and by the way, the mask. We're gonna not follow reasons, reasonable convictions with this. Like again, the colored mask of like, oh, it can take damage, but if you use your, like, uh, the element that's best suited for it, it makes it a lot easier, is a cool idea. Just annoying that none of the elements worked. Unless that yellow is meant to symbolize ice or something. Move it, Cinder. Luckily, Convexity's got my back. Also, I've never heard that line before. Move it, Cinder. Don't talk to your girlfriend that way, Spyro. Just because you're literally chained together doesn't mean you can talk to her like that. But yeah, Convexity Breath, or like, or whatever it is, is very cool. I like it. Alright, there's just a Golden Dragon statue on its side. Oh, uh, Really, I'm just doing this for completion's sake. I, no reason to destroy you, but I shall. Hmm. And then we fly over here. Again, the the camera bit is a it's weird sometimes when it's like we're gonna move the camera over here. More health for me. From the Twitch chat, your community seems like a safe place where people can joke around, make arguments if politely done, and learn about each other. A safe environment with no assumptions of others. Nobody's perfect, we all make mistakes. True. Then again, I haven't really had much of a community for a long time. So, but luckily, we've never had really any troublemakers come along. Like, doubtless, there's going to be at some point where something happens. That's just a matter of the internet. But hopefully, if that day comes, I handle it well. But yeah, but generally, so long as people act nice, be kind, and aren't major jerks. Should be perfectly fine. Oh, <laughs> for a moment, it's like, hmm, where do I go? Ah, a wind tunnel to doom land, I presume. I love that Cinder has bracelets of all types. I just like the armor system in this game. Considering that we're kind of, sort of, going for war and that, uh, going to war, and we can unlock different armor types with different set bonuses, it's a fun time. Another reason this game should be remade, or like this trilogy, so that armor appears in these cutscenes. Because it could be in-engine, rather than pre-rendered. Cool design. A, a kind of dark purple to it, but still kind of cool. You do have dark, dark Spyro in you. Let's just use our convexity breath and annihilate him. Oh, yeah. Oh, he took it off. Huh. You used her. What did she use me for? What does he mean? Yeah, what? I don't know what this is. How did Cinder use Spyro? Tell me what. Did she though? You're lying. How? I'm wondering. Is it 
true? No. I don't know. She has, like, gone through a lot. Oh. <laughs> ah, dark evil powers. So we have Dark Spyro and Dark Cinder, apparently. Cinder, no! I mean, Chronicler did say th the powers of darkness did unlock a lot of power in Cinder. Oh, really? How many have there been? But why, though? Why are the purple dragons the harbingers of doom? And how do you know about them, but the others didn't? Is Spyro going to go Dark Spyro, but for good? Like, use the powers of Dark Spyro to fight for good? He doesn't want to. He believes in you. Oh, that's depressing. <laughs> Depression saves the day. And he just brings it back. So is this just going to be a boss battle of Malifor? A little bit odd. We've I thought we'd hear more from the Chronicler by now. He just appeared in the beginning. And then never again. You with me? I'm with you. Oh, ow. Oh, he has evil breath, Al. I wonder. Get convexityed. I think my convexity breath is better than yours if that is what it is. Ow. Hmm. Whoop. Get smacked. <laughs> Get out of the way, I guess. Or maybe it's just purple fire. But that was an interesting, I guess, lore dump. But I wonder what it all means. Keep beating him up. <laughs> this might not be the way they intended, but then again, they do give Fury Breath convexity for the armor bonus. Oh! That, bleh. Your breath attacks are interesting, Malifor. Get smacked. Ow. I use my own breath on you. You use it on me, I use it on you. Might be a little cheap, but hey. What even are those dark freaking electricity meteors? This is a cool arena with the colors all about. To do what? Oh, do a quick time event, I guess. Booyah!
Oh, do you have something planned? In oh, the destroyer is coming, but why is the destroyer coming? How? What is the destroyer? Why was it awakened? <laughs> it just decides to crawl into a volcano, and it okay. That was a cool effect. This is a cool shot. Oh, the planet is actually being destroyed. Oh, now he's using ice breath. This is a cool arena to fight in, actually. Ow! Bombarded by that. Yeah, get smacked. Gotta dodge around, dodge those meteors of doom. Because those home in after that. And they still kind of hit me. I do like that he gives a lot of mana crystals when we hit him. Yeesh! His hitbox is a little wonky sometimes. He's gonna use his blast shield. My question is, why do you want to destroy the world? Why is it the destiny of the purple dragons to destroy the world? I think he just made that up to fuck with us. And like, no idea about the Cinder lured Spyro to the Well of Souls bit. I think that could still be him messing with them. Because Dark Spyro is proven to be kind of a state of mind, so Dark Cinder as well. I think he was just trying to- oop, and I- uh, missed. Ow. Let's do it again. Dodge. Bob and weave. This is a cool design for a dragon, though. Oh, that was a cool animation of them twirling together. Did I not do, like, do it fast enough or what? Or is this, like, his... Or did I just, like, uh, technically do a second phase over again? Because I didn't do a quicker time enough. Okay, there we go. I didn't do it at all. Oh, that's a cool move! It's like they weaponized a 69. Yeah, the world is still crumbling. Oh, we went to a volcano. Oh. Alright, so what do we do with that? How do you have a shield of doom? Or are we supposed to use the Convexity Breath now? Ah, uh, darn. Ow, ow. No idea I'm supposed to get mana crystals. Well, fine, we are at the end. Let's do some fury. Prepare to die. The power. 
compels you to die! Of course you still survive, you bastard! Oh! Ow! Press up the wall! Booyah! I wish that this, like, cutscene kept that movement, because that was a cool move they used against him. You are destroying the world, and you are on the world. What do you think is going to happen? Just hang on. How are you talking with your mouth full of convexity? Get blasted, Malifor. For, like, the third time. Oh, what's this? Exactly what I was saying. Is this the dark crystal of the world? The dragons of the past come to smack you down? Oh, Jesus! He got sucked into the dark crystal! Well, crystals are linked to dragons. They're kind of the memories and stuff. Even if the world is, at least Malifor is gone. Oh, hey, Ignitus. I, I made a joke about you becoming a force ghost. After all of this, you we'll do it to together. Let's just go. Where, Cinder? There'll be nothing left. The world is breaking apart. There's but always hope, maybe. Oh. I think I meant to. Then I'm with you. To the end. I love you. Alright, that's a touching that was a touching moment. <laughs> Ah, he created an atmosphere. Oh. So how's this how is this gonna help the power scaling? He fixed the planet! And just like Malifor before him, he created uh, floating islands, but like for good. And somehow everyone survived. By staying underground as the planet exploded. And then, of course, there's just the other planets that are super close. That's cool. Oh, that's cool. Up there in the sky. And that's it! Apparently Spyro's dead! Like, this is another reason why I would like for this trilogy to be remade. To just, like, expand a bit. Because while that, that was very cool, that was very, very cool, I think if there was just a bit more time, a bit more of, like, even just epilogue showing things off, could have added a bit more weight to the events. But this was good. This was good. This is a very nice ending. It just felt a little bit rushed. Just a little bit rushed. Like, in terms of the storytelling, the pacing felt rushed. Because I think they did good with what they had. They probably had a set budget. They had a set amount of time. They were said, hey, do this in this amount of time. And they, for what they probably were given, this was good. Good, man. And it just has such possibility to it. That we don't even see Spark see his brother die. Yeah. That's another thing, like... Just up in the sky, there was a dragon constellation. Like, not even constellation, it was kind of like 
a dragon cosmos. But that was cool. Like, again, this trilogy is so cool because I've said it before. I know why a decent amount of, like, Insomniac Spyro fans would dislike this trilogy because it doesn't have the aesthetic and vibes of that trilogy. <laughs> the, the, the song is called I Would Die For You. Wow. Oh, Mark Hamill was Malifor? Huh. Neat. But... Yeah, like, I can understand why fans of the Insomniac games would have disliked this, because it doesn't have the gameplay or the vibe or aesthetic of those games. But for me, I don't really follow, like, franchises to just do the same thing over and over again. I just follow, like, franchises if they have cool things. Like, I follow Spyro the Dragon for Spyro the Dragon. And this trilogy was like, hey, what if we took Spyro the Dragon and went in a cool little direction with it? Especially after two games not made by Insomniac that tried to recapture the Insomniac era's, like, success, but just came off as bootleg Insomniac games. Whereas this, this trilogy tried to be its own thing, and aside from Eternal Night, I think succeeded. I think it did, ex did very well succeed. It's just very, very neat. Like, again, the main reason why I would love for there to be a Legend of Spyro trilogy remake is they could, uh, like, better bridge, like, the... Because they do kind of graphically jump between Eternal Night and Dawn of the Dragon because two different studios made those games. And they could fix up... Like, I just wish that they could fix up the story a bit. Because this is wonderful. It just needs a bit more polish and expansion on it. If they could expand on the story in certain parts, maybe have a bit more downtime in Dawn of the Dragon, have Spyro, Sparks, and Cinder talk, have some scenes like that. Have, like, uh, in Eternal Night, if it was redone, give Cinder some levels. And actually explore Cinder as a character before Dawn of the Dragon. Because she didn't get much highlight all over the place. But yeah, I think this was a fantastic trilogy. Aside from Eternal Night, which even then still has a nice bit of possibility to it. Still, like, I guess a little disappointing that, like, it... Oh! Oh, epilogue! Chronicler, I see you! Be welcome, friend. I have long been expecting you. A new age is beginning. With each new age, a worthy dragon is chosen to chronicle the many triumphs and failures of that age. This has been my duty for many millennia. And now, ignite us. Oh! <laughs> pass this honor to me. Well, if Ignitus can survive exploding, what yeah. Is what is Spyro? Is he? Hmm. That is the question, isn't it? You see, each time a dragon dies, a new page is written in this book. And yet Malifor is the only one here. I can't seem to find any trace of Spyro. <laughs> and then he just f disappears. That's kind of cool. Well, young dragon, where might you be? Off having an adventure, maybe. 
Oh, the music. <laughs> he has other things to do. That's cool. I like it. I like it. This is super cool. Super, super cool. Okay, I'll try to condense my thoughts so we don't just ramble on eternally. First, I'll give my, like, general thoughts again over, like, the difference between the Insomniac Spyros, the bootleg Insomniac, like, not Insomniac Spyros that came after Enter the Dragonfly, Hero's Tale, and then jumping over to Legend of Spyro, where, even though, like, the Insomniac trilogy is probably objectively better in terms of being a whole package... I think I still prefer the Legend of Spyro trilogy because the aesthetic vibes and potential of it. Like, when I play the Reignited trilogy or even the original PlayStation 1 games, they are very nice games. They are very well done with maybe a few wonkiness with the, like, uh, boost pad mechanic in the first game. But... As games, they are nice, functional, and fun. But I think The Legend of Spyro is just... It has a grandiosity to it. It has a fantasy to it. The fact that it has, like, better story and characters just kind of elevates it for me. That even though the gameplay can kind of get samey sometimes and kind of annoying sometimes, like with some of the bonus boss enemies being a little weird and wonky, and, like, Eternal Night just being... Uh, poor Eternal Night. But we'll get to that. But it's overall, the Legend of Spyro trilogy just has an air of possibility to it. That it sticks in the mind a bit more than the original Insomniac games. And I think that's partly why the Inner the Dragonfly and Hero's Tale kind of failed. It was because they were trying to recapture Insomniac too much. We're definitely going to look at the bonuses in just a second. I'm just giving my thoughts first. With like... Enter the Dragonfly and Hero's Tale were trying too hard, or were ordered too much, to be like the Insomniac games. I think the reason why... Even though, like, A New Beginning has some funky parts... And Enter the Eternal Night is very, very, very jank. And there's even some janky and s silly parts of uh, Legend of Spyro, uh, Dawn of the Dragon, is that Dawn of the Dragon, Eternal Night, and A New Beginning was were all trying to be their own thing. They looked at Spyro and said, what kind of cool thing can we do with you? And they went off in their own direction. And I think that's just really, really cool. Like, what they did, what they tried to do. And I think that's why The Legend of Spyro would do so good as a remake. Like, if they remade this trilogy, I think it could do wonders because they could expand the story, refine the story, and expand where it could get major use. Refine the graphics here or there, do the like, cinematics a bit better, tell the story a bit better, fix the pacing, give Cinder stuff to do in Eternal Night and stuff. is like, there is more that can be done with Legend of Spyro, if given the chance. And I just sadly don't think that it will be given that chance. Because people are too rose-colored tinted glasses for Insomniac Spyro, because it's kind of a safe space for Spyro. Because the Insomniac games are functional, fun, and well-designed. But character-wise, they're kind of one-note to a degree. They're fun one-note, but they're still kind of one-note. Like, none of the characters really super-duper stand out in, like, the Insomniac trilogy. And the only reason why I remember, like, from A Hero's Tale, the hyena girl and the ice princess is because I'm a furry. 
and because it's just weird to see like here anthropomorphic character with voiced lines out of nowhere in this game they're just kind of big-lipped alligator moment surprise that just stick in your head but I just like Legend of Spyro has such possibility to it just like hopefully someday maybe Activision or whoever owns Spyro now like gives Legend of Spyro the chance it probably like because like, they probably like, just look at these games they came out a year apart each a new beginning came out in 2007 I think and then the next Eternal Night was 2008 a Dawn of the Dragon 2009 I think, at the very least, each one came out a year after the other. And you can definitely feel the rush in certain aspects. In A New Beginning, I think A New Beginning had the most leeway, probably because it was the first one made. But I also remember reading that Chrome Studios, I believe, they were the people behind the first two Legend of Spyro games, A New Beginning and Eternal Night, they had, like, $10 million for both games. And they split it, like, 60-40 in favor of A New Beginning. And you can feel that. A New Beginning, like, overall, as an overall package, feels more put together than Eternal Night. Eternal Night feels kind of janky because they reused bosses and animations for those bosses, like, flagrantly. And sometimes those bosses were bad, like the airship train ripoff. And, like, the story also suffered there. But oddly enough, I think aside from the train ripoff in the pirate ship level, the only bad design was the scorpion monsters. Because I remember a chatter telling me, during Eternal Night that the scorpions that have the special mechanic of you need to do the launcher attack to break their guard, but that only works on the scorpions guard. None of the other guarding enemies can break, you cannot break their guards. And people forgot that mechanic because it was there once and uh, could never beat the scorpions. So it was painful. But... I like this because this game has memorable characters. This game has a memorable story. Even, like, I wish the story just was expanded. Because they hit the points they needed to hit. And little more, it felt like. Probably because of budget and time constraints. And just, like... I could be liking this trilogy for what it could be more than for what it is, but I still think that speaks to the soul of this trilogy because it makes you want more. Well, at least it makes me want more. It makes me want more. I want more of these characters. I want more of the story that was told. I want scenes that don't exist. I want interactions more of. It's just like, again, there's just such possibility such potential that feels untapped because it was probably rushed and we could have gotten a movie but at the same time if i remember another chatter told me that like there was a leaked spiral the dragon movie script and it is apparently a trip and a half so who knows? Maybe one day I'll do a stream where I read through the leaked Spyro movie script and be like, Oh, maybe Skylanders was the lesser of two evils. I think there are rumors going around a new Spyro game by Toys for Bob, the people who made the Reignited and Crash 4 getting funding. Like, on the one hand, that is cool. On the other hand, I'm a little bit wary because remember the previous Spyro 4 and 5 Enter the Dragonfly and uh, A Hero's Tale granted those ones suffered mostly because of executive meddling and time constraints and more than likely Spyro has been out of the limelight long enough that 
the publisher will give Toys for Bob the time they need to make it good. The problem is, like, after playing Enter the Dragonfly, and after playing A Hero's Tale, and then playing Legend of Spyro, like, again, I prefer Legend of Spyro now. And I just fear that if Toys for Bob does make a new Spyro 4, that it will just be, hey, let's continue the Insomniac games. Let's bring back characters people like. Then again, maybe a Spyro 4 could be cool. Like they could bring back Ember, Flame, and throw Cinder in there. And we can see an official reignited Cinder. That could be cool, but... Like, what would they do story-wise? Because Crash has more characterly, char like, villains than Spyro. And I don't think I'd want to see Ripto or the Enchantress come back. Hell, maybe they could throw Malifor in. I don't, I don't want Red. Red was bad. I don't like Red. But, yeah, it's like, now, after playing... Enter the Dragonfly and Hero's Tale. I just have an apprehension towards insomniac likes Because it could just be that it could just be that I'm biased towards stories. I love stories in games. I love stories in video games. Because gameplay for gameplay's sake is fine. But I love it when gameplay is a vehicle to tell a cool story. And that's probably why I enjoy the Legend of Spyro trilogy more than the Insomniac trilogy or the Reignited trilogy. Because while the gameplay can sometimes fall off, it is a vehicle for a cool story. And the story that it is telling, even if it feels incomplete some places, like Eternal Night, it's still good. I'm still very, very cool. I, I I still really like it. I like the possibility. I like what's there, and I want more. But yeah, overall, if Toys for Bob does make a new Spyro game, I'll definitely give it a shot if it looks good. Again, I wouldn't mind seeing, like, characters that had potential but were kind of left to the wayside, like Ember, Flame, and Cinder being brought in. Hell, maybe they could make a Spyro game that has four-player co-op with the four dragons. You have Spyro, you have Ember, you have Flame, you have Cinder. I think it could work well. But, again, no idea what they do for story, and I'm kind of afraid that they, like, I don't know. Again, I, I can't see bringing back Ripto and the Enchantress because, I like, they worked for what they were, but I don't think bringing them back would be a good idea. I think they need to make a new villain. Because, like... Like, I don't know. Again, I'm the guy here saying I would vastly prefer... I would prefer a Legend of Spyro trilogy remake. That was like a single game telling a singular story, and you could break them up into arcs. Arc 1 would be a new beginning, Arc 2, well, uh, Act 1 would be new beginning, Act 2 would be Eternal Night, and Act 3 would be Dawn of the Dragon. Fix things up, pace the story better, give Cinder levels in Eternal Night so we can actually have something for Cinder to do. Like, I think that would be cool. I'm the, then, it, like, it's like, I don't know. It's just, it feels like there's more possibility for Legend of Spyro compared to, like, classic Spyro. Because, like, what would Crash 4 from Toys for Bob be? Would they take the idea of multiple frame breath... Frame... Br f multiple breath attacks from Enter the Dragonfly and Hero's Tale? Because if you do classic Spyro and you include different breath attacks, you'd have to turn them into puzzles. Which I guess they kind of sort of could because they already... Toys for Bob did make... The uh, Crash 4, it's about time, and they added in the different mask powers. So they do have a possibility to make cool, like, interactive abilities. But again, it's like, 
I'm the story guy. I like stories. I really enjoy the Ace Attorney games. I enjoy... <laughs> Again, I said it a lot during my Pokemon Mystery Dungeon games playthroughs. When it came to Rescue Team and even Explorers of Sky, the gameplay was a vehicle for me to explore a cool world with cool characters going through a cool story. And then it was only at Gates to Infinity that I started to like the gameplay for the gameplay's sake. So it's like, who knows? But, yeah. Over, uh, I, uh, I got, I got uh, derailed there. But if I had to rank the Legend of Spyro games against themselves, oh, I have no idea. I have no idea because A New Beginning is really good. As a, as a, it's funny because A New Beginning is really good as a beginning. Dawn of the Dragon is really good as an ending. A, a, like, A New Beginning, like, has a decent, like, uh, I think if I had to pick a best Legend of Spyro game, it'd have to be Dawn of the Dragon. It has collectibles, which are functional and good to get to. It has a story that, while was kind of rushed in pacing, was still cool and fun to go through. It had, like, cool characters that I wish I had more time with. It had graphics that looked very nice. And it had levels that were open and explorable. A New Beginning kind of suffers because the levels are kind of constrained. And kind of very PS2-y in level design. But... Of course, like, Eternal Night is the least... Of all the Legend of Spyro games. And that's just because of, like, the reused bosses, the, like, difficulty spike, some enemies being badly designed, the Scorpions, because they have one weird mechanic and nothing. They have a unique mechanic purely for them that is never repeated. And again, there was, like, the story of Eternal Night also suffers because it's very go here, go here, go here, ah, story happens. Rather than feeling like a natural progression. Like, it feels like you get railroaded story-wise in Eternal Night far more than the other ones. If I was in charge of, like, laying down a design document for remaking the Legend of Spyro games... It would definitely be unify the graphics, still give Spyro and Cinder a smaller form, and then a slightly more mature form when they come out of the crystal, because I think that is a cool ramp up to the characters. I think that's a cool little thing. Expand on the story in A New Beginning, expand on the beginning there. How they find Ignitus should give more gravitas, a little bit of extra time to things. Just, like, let things breathe a bit more. Then in Eternal Night, you need a major overhaul. I think the... Because there is something kind of neat to, like, how Chronicler is, like, using the future pages in a way to guide Spyro to him through circumstance. But that's not what it feels like when you play the game. It feels like, oh, we got to the tree, and then thing happened, and then thing happened, and then, oop, we're at Chronicler by accident. There needs to be more definitive storytelling for Spyro in Eternal Night. And then we need to pull a Halo 2 and give Cinder some levels. Even if it's just like three levels. Like, I don't know. Cinder, ex like, going along by herself and then getting kidnapped by the, the Sky Pirates could be neat. Then maybe a bit of Cinder trying to get away from her captors. And then a third Cinder level where... She, like, helps Sparks get through the Well of Souls a bit, and then you fight Dark Spyro to knock Spyro out of it. And it obviously feels like a, like, hopeless boss battle because Cinder needs to talk Spyro out of being evil, which I think would be a cool bookend thing to the end, maybe, where Cinder, like, because it almost feels like Cinder broke out of the being evil for Spyro's sake there. But... 
Yeah, I think there's a lot of possibility you could do with Legend of Spyro if it was remade. But I sadly don't think that there's much of a, like, market for it compared to the other ones. Because, again, people adore, like, the world story and characters of Legend of Spyro, it seems. But, like, the games themselves are kind of just there for most people. Which is why I almost wish that, like, that almost makes me want them to be remade more so that they could get a redemption. Because, like, The Legend of Spyro came out just at a weird time. They probably came out at the only time they could. But the fans of classical Spyro just wanted more Insomniac. And because, like, even though... I still hold that The Legend of Spyro is not, like, dark and gritty. It's not. It's just not as bright and colorful compared to the Insomniac games. It's kind of Lord of the Rings in grittiness to a degree. That's at least the vibe I get. And no, it's not just because Elijah Wood voices Spyro. But... Yeah, I love these games. These games are very, very good. And it's just kind of neat that Spyro has, in my opinion, two good trilogies. Even if, like, Eternal Night kind of falls off a bit. If I had to rank, like, The Legend of Spyro versus, like, the other Spyro games. Like, uh, at the bottom of the Spyro games is Enter the Dragonfly. Enter the Dragonfly is just terrible. Because it is the most Christmas rushed, most executively meddled garbage. It had cool ideas, but they weren't able to do any of those cool ideas. And thus, everything just went to hell. It's just... It, it is a broken down piece of broken dreams. Then, honestly, I think A Hero's Tale is next up in terms of being bad. Because... While it is better than Enter the Dragonfly, A Hero's Tale still feels kind of stock Spyro. There isn't much story. The humor falls flat. Too video gamey. Spyro... I don't know. Spyro's characterization feels a too much in terms of cocky and arrogant and, like, uncaring. And the professor is just kind of an idiot. Plus, Ember and Flame just exist to be palette swaps. And then, like, the deeper you get in, the boss battles get worse, clunkier, more drawn out, more precise. The levels sometimes feel a bit wonky. Then the game glitched on me, which did not do it any favors. And just didn't really feel like it had an ending. You beat Red, and then that's it. You beat Red, that's the end of the game. At least the other Insomniac Spyros had epilogues to a degree. A little touch base of the characters. But the two obvious bad ones to the side... I would then probably say Eternal Night is bad because it is the middle child storytelling-wise for The Legend of Spyro. And its gameplay is the worst out of all of them. And, yeah. Then I think it would go Spyro 3 from Insomniac, then Spyro 2 from Insomniac. It's been a long time since I played them, so it's kind of hard to rank them, but they do feel like uh, solid games. Solid. Some good characters, if they're a bit one-note. What annoyances there are, I've long forgotten them. Then, honestly, then I think Spyro 1 from Insomniac. Spyro 1 will always have a good place in my heart because it's simple. It's nice. Well, it depends. Spyro 1 and Spyro 2 from Insomniac are kind of interchangeable for me because Spyro 2 has better characters and story. Spyro 1 feels a lot more simpler and fun due to that simplicity. Like, I don't know. And then, of course... 
A New Beginning and then Dawn of the Dragon because they just... The possibility, man. The possibilities just hit me in the heart. I just feel like there's a lot that could be done with Legend of Spyro. And, like, it actually made me feel things. When Cinder said, I love you, I actually felt my heart flutter. It's like, it made me feel things. I like that. And then, like, the epilogue showing Chronicler giving him his second scene in the game, handing things off, like, Jedi Force Ghost style to Ignitus. Just to cut to Spyro and Cinder being like, hey, we survived. The world is broken, but alive. I just think it's cool. And again, there were some story moments that actually got me really, like, invested. Ignitus's death followed by a brief flash of Dark Spyro coming out. But, uh, but I guess I'll stop rambling and we'll quickly take a look at the galleries because we unlocked those. Oh, it's a little mini video, I guess. Because, yep, these are good models. That was a good art. Ah, designing the, the... Like, the armor. It was very cool. I think the armor could uh, could have used a bit more... Oh, that though, that's cool. Those are cool things. Even if those ones didn't make it into the game. Those designs. I need to draw Spyro and Cinder more. <laughs> that bottom right hand one looked like Dovahkiin. 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 Oh, that's some cool art. The art in this game is very fantastic. I gotta say. Ooh, actual like super in there design. For Spyro. Very cool. Oh, that's a cool that's a cool drawing. Like I will say, like even though oh that's some cool art. I will say even though like uh, a new beginning in Eternal Night Spyro looks a bit clunky, they definitely gave him a glow up in Dawn of the Dragon. Same thing with Cinder. Like, small Cinder. Oh, that was cool. He was manipulating the fire from a fire. A fire, like a, a campfire. And then pulling an enemy with his fire breath. That's a cool idea. That's neat. That's super cool. And now let's look at Cinder's. That was super cool. I do like how they, like, uh, have just, like, a base. Like, ah, this is where we'll put the armor to really test out the armor. It seems, like, basic, obvious, haha, but uh, just seeing it in action is neat. This is a cool unlockable. These are very neat armor concepts. Yeah, Cinder definitely got a... A glow up the most because her original form. Oh, that's a neat kind of cartoony sender. Feels kind of flat compared to the other one. Again, this art is just so good. Props to the artists of this game. The artists and like, uh, I guess the story writers. It's just like, it's super cool. Uh, and then there it is, like the the serpent tether. Which again, is a very cool mechanic, both like uh, gotta get the characters to stay together because it's a co-op game. But I also like that it's put in with like puzzles and stories. Like it's really cool, but yeah. Just even though like mechanically... And everything, objectively, The Legend of Spyro probably is worse in terms of quality compared to the Insomniac Trilogy or the Reignited Trilogy. 
I just can't help but utterly adore this game. These games. Even if, like, I would sooner replay the entire Reignited trilogy before p replaying the entire, like, uh, Legend of Spyro trilogy. I would still, like, easily replay, like, uh, A New Beginning in Dawn of the Dragon. They're just very, very cool. The characters are really nice. And I just wish there was more time with them. It is almost sad that Sparks wasn't there in the end. I think that would have been a kind of neat, like, uh, bookend. As Sparks and Cinder refused to leave Spyro at the end of Eternal Night, causing them to be encased in the crystal with him. And that could have been a cool little thing if Sparks did go with Spyro and Cinder, where once again, they would be like, no, I refuse. We started this together, we'll end this together. It'd be kind of cool. But yeah, just like, the music, again, I said it earlier in the stream, the music is kind of understated throughout the trilogy with the only real only a few standout parts that made me perk up and go oh hey that's cool but I utterly adore how they reused the A New Beginnings main title theme in the Avalar like Meadows stage but yeah I just I just wish that there was m more more story and more character primarily. Like, honestly, if they could somehow remake these games with, like, even the same graphics and near the same gameplay and just add more story, I would probably take that. <laughs> I would take a Legend of Spyro expanded trilogy that's just more story and character because I just love that so much. But now this is making me go like now this is making me want to like write Spyro stories. Because again, there's so much possibility here. There is still a little bit of clunky exposition at the end with Malifor being like, ah, Cinder tricked you to the well of souls so you would release me. Which is weird. It doesn't really feel like he did release him, but oh well, Christmas rushed and time constraints, bleh. And uh, the weirdness of the purple dragons, there have been ones before, and they're always meant to try and bring about the destruction of the world. I don't know. It still feels like that's just Malifor being a wiggly little bitch rather than actually a thing. Considering that Ignitus and none of the others know about purple dragons before Malifor... Saying there's only been two purple dragons, Malifor, and then Spyro, and then the dragons who, like, tutored Malifor and be like, ah, he was our prize student, then he betrayed us, and then we had to lock him away. Like, if they knew the purple dragon was a harbinger of doom, you'd think they would have done something. Then again, maybe they threw that in as, like, a... I don't know, some kind of author's saving throw. So if people want to assume that the other Spyro games happened before Legend of Spyro, maybe? Like, it just feels like there's deep-seated lore that just sadly wasn't put into the game. Like, what is the Destroyer? What are the Golems, apparently? Like, there was the big Golem, then I guess all the other things we've been fighting are little Golems. Like, uh, what are the golems? And why are they trying to destroy the world? Why does Malifor think that he needs to destroy the world or wants to destroy the world? Why does he think he needs to commence with the great purging? Like, how did he reawaken the... Well, I guess tech... 
could that maybe be that uh, he used Spyro to reawaken the golem at the beginning of the game? Maybe. Like, lots of possibility. <laughs> maybe that's a part of the reason why there's also a sense of possibility to The Legend of Spyro, because there's a lot of, like, uh, story that feels like it wasn't, like, super duper able to be put in there. It's like, that's almost kind of depressing. Story mode over. But, yeah, Legend of Spyro is fantastic. I love it. There's some clunky bits. There's some janky bits. The story had uh, rushed pacing. But what was there makes me want more of it. And like I said, <laughs> makes me want to write Spyro stories. Like, again, the most immediate answer is just novelize the games. Add in expanded stories, segments, recharacterize things. But to quickly jump back and give my thoughts of this game in particular, graphics are great, music is great, character designs vastly superior with maybe the exception of Ignitus because he's a bit too smiley. A bit too smiley in the model. But hey, if anybody had, like, I guess if anybody had to have a bit of a wonky model, Ignitus and the other Guardians are better than, say, Hunter or Cinder, Spyro or Sparks, considering that we spend a lot of time with them. It is funny, though, that Sparks seem to have the best, like, cutscene model <laughs> for this game. But, I had a thought, I had a thought. It's still weird wrapping my mind around Sparks being voiced by Wayne Brady. It's a good voice. He's a good voice actor. Like, uh, at the very least, he read the script really well. His voice just seems so weird coming out of Sparks, considering the two voice actors that came before him. But, yeah, I, really, I really like this. I really, really like this. And it's just kind of sad that there's no other Legend of Spyro games like it. Sure, there's the handheld versions of these games, but I'm not really interested in playing those. Ah, uh, they don't hit the storytelling sweet spot for me, I don't think. But who knows? Maybe someday, like... Maybe someday there will be something Legend of Spyro for us. For us, for us poor niche fans of this wonderful game, wonderful trilogy. Like, wonderful story, I should say. Eternal Night kind of brings down the trilogy-like epitaph. It's like, oh, this wonderful trilogy looks at Eternal Night. This wonderful beginning and ending. <laughs> but, like, maybe someday there will be something... Maybe at the very least a re-release that's like HD'd up, touched up, a few fixed things here or there, lightly released back to the masses. That's the most likely. The second most likely Legend of Spyro EE thing is Cinder appearing in other future going forward Spyro games. Considering that Cinder is probably... Like, a top three fan favorite Spyro character. With the only other, like... <laughs> I think, like, the top three Spyro characters are probably Spyro, Alora, and Cinder. But even then, like, it feels like Alora only really shot up after the Reignited Trilogy came out. Breathed new life into the character. So, like, it could be cool to see Cinder... In a, like, different Spyro world, given a second chance to gain more fans. But, like, I just really, really like the vibes, the story, the characters of The Legend of Spyro. And hopefully someday, some way, we'll get more. Get something. But I think that's enough rambling from me. I've rambled on a long time. I really enjoyed this. This was fun. 
I wish there was more story and characters, but I guess that's like, well, more story and more character stuff with these characters. But I guess that's what fan fiction is for, ain't it? Well, we are done with our Spyrothon, everybody. We beat Enter the Dragonfly Hero's Tale and the entire Legend of Spyro trilogy from the end of March to now. And so the next game... <laughs> well, technically Cinder was in the Skylanders in his TV show, but that's Skylanders, so I always forget that. I always forget that. Maybe the Skylanders TV show is finer. But yeah, I know that a lot of people have beef with the Skylanders as a series. But again, who knows? Maybe Skylanders is the lesser of two evils if the whispers I've heard about that Spyro movie script is anything to go by. But with our Spyro Thon done, closed away forever. We shall now jump back to, I think, the series that a lot of people came f to, <laughs> to my streams for. Next time, on Wednesday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time, we will jump in to the final Pokemon Mystery Dungeon game that was brand new. Technically, there is Rescue Team DX, but that's a remake. We will jump back. To Pokemon Super Mystery Dungeon and see if that there Mystery Dungeon game released in, I believe, 2017? My memory for time is bad. Released all the way back. Well, no, would it have been? I don't think so. It feels a long time ago, but I forget. Because Explorers of Sky came out in 2009. Then... Gates to Infinity came out, I think, in 2013. Like, I forget. My memory's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I still love Cinder's Skylanders model. At least that's good. <laughs> At least she might be better than poor, poor Gremlin Spyro. But yes, we will jump back finally to the finality of the Mystery Dungeon series, as there hasn't been a new one released since technically Rescue Team DX. But since that's a remake of the first one, not sure how many people, like, count it. So who knows? And I do not own that one, so... And, uh, like, like, I don't know. Maybe if I come into it by happenstance, or if I get a windfall of a billion dollars... I'll pick up Rescue Team DX and we can play through that. But, like, the last new story, the last new super content to come out of the Mystery Dungeon games was Super Mystery Dungeon. And I've heard decent things about it. I've heard very decent things about it. So I cannot wait to play it and see... What it has in store for me. And I just realized I need to draw the team I'm gonna I'm going for. <laughs> I need to buckle down and draw the Mystery Dungeon team that I plan on using for Super Mystery Dungeon. Ah. Uh, that'll be a thing. But yes, Wednesday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time, we will begin the beginning of the end for the Mystery Dungeon franchise, unless Next year beholds new Mystery Dungeon content, but who knows? <laughs> who are you planning on for Super? Well, that's for me to know and for you to see. <laughs> Slight incentive for people to tune in for <laughs> to see Super Mystery Dungeon. Ha ha ha. I think I might have mentioned it during one of the streams. It's been a long time. Time is an illusion. <laughs> but... I do believe that that will be that for now. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. If you want more from me, everything I do is in my link tree. Linktr.ee slash neonicywings. So if you want edited content YouTube channel, stuff that I do, edited videos, I, I'm making scripts. Maybe I'll make one, make a video this year. Bleh. The world is evil. Then there's... Uh, if you want uh, streams, links to my YouTube streaming and Twitch streaming is there, depending on what you prefer. 
Hey, Neon, are you okay with me? Yeah, you haven't done anything wonky, weird, or mean. You're a chill in my book. But, uh, and then for all the VODs, these streams will be uploaded to the streaming YouTube channel for posterity and potential better quality. Sometimes live streaming can be wonky and weird. So that's why I always record them, just in case. <laughs> my bets are on Charmander. Maybe. Charmander is a cool Pokemon. And I have been reading a Mystery Dungeon fanfic with a cool Charmander, so maybe. But then again, at the same time, I like to have him be... <laughs> who knows? <laughs> My brain went like, ah, maybe I can like, choose them and name them <laughs> in, in honor of that character. But at the same time, brain wants to churn its own path. But uh, also in my link tree are links to the various sites that I post art to, similar to my little character in the corner. So if you want to follow and see the various different arts I post, I post to many different sites like Tumblr, DeviantArt, Newgrounds, Blue Sky, Twitter, so many sites it's hard to keep up with. Then there's blah blah blah. I write stories, so links to the doth stories I doth write. Are there men? I need to jump back in and write more. I got, I've, got, I've been hit with writer's block. Yeah. Need to write more. Then there's, yeah, the writing. Need to write more, but the writing links are there. And then finally, for the affluent and super kind, is my Patreon. So if people are well off and feel like throwing some dollary dues my way, my Patreon, which I treat as just like a little donation box, is there for just simplicity and nice. Nicety. But yes, but yes, next time we will begin Pokemon Super Mystery Dungeon and experience the final tale that we've had from Mystery Dungeon so far and see which Mystery Dungeon game reigns supreme in my heart. But yes, thank you very much for watching, everybody. Just remember, be you, be true, be happy, but most importantly... Be kind and stay hydrated. I hope to see you dudes next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>